Hello, it's Kate Reynolds here. I'm just showing here a shot of some of the things that I'm using and I'll just pan across for this project. So there's sort of buttons, beads, string, ribbons, pegs, rose hips, broken jewellery, pins, wire, broken pottery, all sorts of bits and pieces there with also paper, the collage materials, ribbons, magazines, and here are my faces that I've made, whoops. Um, and there are some wooden spoons that I'm about to work on. I've got some um, water there and some paint brushes, some PVA glue, some paint, this is acrylic paint, some araldite, raffia, there's my paint. Okay. So we're sort of going to make a, like a, have a bit of fun making faces on using a wooden spoon as a starting point. But you don't have to, if you wanted to, you could actually make your wooden spoon into a sort of a more abstract construction. So it could be, um, oops, I'm just getting that right. Okay. Okay, so. Okay, so I set this project many years ago to students and actually kept this one. So this student had made their, they've sort of customised their wooden spoon with all sorts of other objects hanging from it. So they'd actually drilled holes in it and added wire and bound things into it like bits of broken pottery and buttons and there's a key there. So I thought that was a quite a fun thing, sort of, it's a little thing that hangs in my house. Um, so if you wanted to not go down the sort of portrait or face route, you could just have fun seeing how you could customise or upcycle a wooden spoon. Um, the other thing I have an example of is, um, this is just a wooden peg and this is something I made years ago for my children. So it's, I turned a wooden peg into a little fairy with a bit of an old flower and some cloth and a, a face and a bit of thread there. So that's another thing that you could do for your grandchildren or children. Anyway, going back to the wooden spoon, if you wanted to do the wooden spoon, you just start, these are a few old ones I had and I've put a background colour on this um, using my acrylic paint. Now if you need somebody to model it, you could be looking at a photograph if you wanted to or you might have a painting like a portrait or a classical painting of something, an image that you'd really like to try and transfer onto this spoon. Um, but if you wanted to, just, just play around with it and go completely abstract, that's fine. So you could do a Picasso if you want, or a, a Hockney or a Matisse or um, you know, a classical painting, and I can't think of anyone at the moment, like a Rembrandt or something. You could do something very detailed. But anyway, if I start with this one that I've just put a background coat on, and I'll just show you how I might go about painting. Um, so with my smaller brush, I'm going to put on here an outline maybe of the face. So, okay, so. So you can work into this, build up your layers. Okay, take another brush. If you want to take bits off, you can use a, a bit of cloth or something or a bit of tissue to get rid of 
anything where you've gone wrong. Okay, so that colour, maybe I'll add that into the mouth there. So if you look at the accompanying photographs that I've sent you, there's a whole variety of different sort of techniques that I've used. I'll just show you the painting now, but you could with your, if you just got one spoon, you could literally, if I just move those, arrange some of these objects, which is what I, I did earlier. Or a pin, don't know whether that will, bit hard to make an eye um you know that bit of wire makes quite a good mouth and you could just photograph them you don't necessarily have to paint anything you could photograph it and send it to the the facebook page um so we can all have a little look yeah i found a pan scour it looks re really good as a bit of hair there Um, you know, so I've made sort of countless little um, arrangements and faces today, just using bits and pieces that I found in my workshop. I found a load of wire. It's quite a good for hair. So it's just fun messing around, trying arranging the faces in different ways. Now you can stick anything you've made um, and come up with, you can stick down with Aerodite. Um, PVA glue is going to be okay for the paper or ribbons and things. The other technique is to use cutouts from magazines so I've got some eyes here I can stick on you might paint the background first in fact you could even sort of put these onto your painted mix the painting in fact I might do that so you could arrange them and before you actually stick anything down it's quite Quite good that. Um, I've got a mouth here. So anything you've cut out. Oh no, that's a nose, isn't it? Okay, here's the mouth. Okay, quite like the mouth I've got there for that. Um, it's quite good hair. You can even do this with your children or grandchildren, anyone who's around. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that. So that's something I've just come up with just now. Just a few ideas there. Okay, well, I hope you have fun with this technique. And if you really want to take it further, you could make clothes. If you're good at sewing or you could um, collage some clothes on here with some cardboard and things. Um, but yeah, have fun.